Lord Jesus, we thank you again for this day. Thank you for our waking and rising, our health and our strength. Thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy and your loving kindness. Thank you for saving us, bringing us out of darkness into the marvelous light, Lord God. Father, as we come before you this morning, we honor you, Lord. We give you glory for it is in the precious name of your Son, Lord God, that we're saved. We live by your word, Lord. In the beginning was your word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, Lord. You say you came into your own, and your own received you not. But to as many as received you, gave them power to become the sons of God. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, Lord God, enabling us to live a life that's pleasing unto you. So as we come before you today, we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Forgive us, Father, where we've come short of your glory. Search our hearts and our minds, Lord. If anything be not of you, remove it, Lord God. Or give us the power and the strength. Enable us to remove it ourselves. That we can have this man in us, which was also in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we thank you again today. Bless your word today, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. And amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Give an honor this morning to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give an honor this morning to each of you in your respectful places. It's a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise for being back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, just want to thank everybody again. I give you a big thank you. Love you. Uh, wonderful uh, last weekend. Appreciation. Uh, 17 and a half years. I, I had to throw that in there because it's almost it, my, my, my anniversary for his years always come up ahead of uh, my appreciation. So uh, in February it was 17 years. And so we had appreciation in September. So, you know, you add those months on to it. It's a blessing. Uh, amen. So I'm thankful uh, to God first and to each of you. Amen. As you showed your love and our appreciation. Amen. So we're going to try to bring a word to you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to be coming from uh, 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, and the 12th verse. If you got your swords, 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Amen. And when you find it, if you'll stand with me out of recognition for God's word, 1 Timothy 6 and 12. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Amen. You got it? Amen. We have it on the screen, uh, sis. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 6 and 12. Uh, the screen is good, but always this is your sword. Amen. Keep that sword with you. Amen. This is important. Amen. Learn where those verses are at. Amen. Uh, the screen is great. But we don't never want you to get so accustomed to it that you forget, amen, how to use your Bible, amen, how to use the Word of God, amen. We'll give them just a minute uh, for those that are coming in, just a minute, amen, for you that's coming in, First Timothy 6 and 12, First Timothy 6 and 12, let us read, let us read, First Timothy 6 and 12. Everybody standing? 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Okay, let's go. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. One more time. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. If I would give you a thought this morning, praise the Lord, it would be fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Now come on and tell somebody, fight the good fight of faith. We got to fight the good fight of faith. Come on, tell somebody I've come too far to throw in the towel. So we might as well keep fighting. Amen. The good fight of faith. Amen. Every believer should fight a good fight spiritually. Amen. You should be able to say one day as you're about to leave this earth, 
I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. Yes. And this isn't a physical battle that we're talking about, but it's a spiritual battle. Uh, it's a daily struggle that shapes our character and determines our eternity. How many of you know that the devil is busy? And we have to fight the good fight of faith. There's so many things trying to distract us. Amen. As, as he said in his word, he said, told, the apostle Paul told Timothy, he said, fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession. Many of us have made a good confession. We repented of our sins and we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And because of that, we did it in the presence of many witnesses. And because of that, same way he was telling Timothy, we got to fight the good fight of faith. There's so many things trying to distract us, trying to take us off course. In this walk of life, you may lose some friends. Amen. But you got to fight the good fight of faith and take hold to eternal life. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Our, our battle today is not just against flesh and blood, yes. but it's against the devil. It's against Satan and his evil plan. Listen to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 12. It reads, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to put it all on. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the trickery, the schemes of the devil. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oftentimes, we're fighting each other. But that's not where our battle is at. It says, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. You see, just as God has armies of angels, Satan also has an army of fallen angels, uh, whom we refer to as demons. You see, Paul calls them principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickednesses in high places. Listen to uh, uh, verses 11 and 12 from the Amplified Bible. He says, put on the full armor of God. For his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier. So that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Oftentimes when we're warring and battling each other, it, it, the root of the cause is the devil himself. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes when you have a problem with somebody and they say something or do something, one of the things we say the devil is a lie. Yes. Because we realize that the root of the cause that's causing this person or these individuals to act like they are acting is because of the devil. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. So he says for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. But it's against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly, supernatural places. And you see, Paul is warning us that we had better put on the whole armor, the full armor of God, if we're going to be able to withstand the tricks and the schemes and the wiles and the deceptions of the devil. How many of you know that he's a great deceiver? And you see, what is the whole armor that Paul is referring to? Well, it goes on in verses 19, I mean 13 through 19 from the NIV Bible. It says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes. Do you get that? So that when the day of evil comes. In other words, it's coming. Evil is coming. He says, you may be able to stand your ground. 
And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. With the belt of truth, buckle around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. He said, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Remember, without faith it's impossible to please God. For we must believe that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. So he said, in addition to all this, you got to take up the shield of faith. Okay? What did I want to talk about? said, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So he says, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. In other words, when you got a shield of faith up, you can block everything that he's throwing at you. Because the devil going to shoot some arrows at you. He's trying to take you down. Then he went on to say, and pray in the spirit on all occasions. With all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, he says, be alert. And always keep on praying. Be alert. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to be alert. You got to wake up. This ain't no time for sleeping. The devil is real. Do y'all hear me today? He says, be alert. And always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. Do you hear that? Don't just pray for yourself. Pray for your brothers and sisters. We all need prayer. The enemy is not just so selective. Amen. But he's attacking any and every one that he can, especially when it comes to children of God. Amen. So he said, pray also for me. In verse 19. He said, pray also for me. Listen to him. The apostle Paul. He said, pray also for me. Don't never get to the point that you think you don't need no prayer. Don't ever get so high and mighty that you can say, I pray for myself. I don't need nobody praying for me. And then we got this crazy thing that goes around. I don't want everybody praying for me. Like that's going to affect you or something. Sometimes the very ones that you think can't get a prayer through is the very ones who can get a prayer through for you. And sometimes the people that you think can get a prayer through for you is the ones that's got some mess going on that can't get a prayer through for you. So I say pray for me. God knows who to hear and who not to hear. Pray for me. So Paul says, pray also for me. That whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Now watch this, newsflash. Just in case you don't know or didn't know, the Christian life is all about spiritual warfare. It's a battle between evil and good, light and darkness, truth and lies that takes place within our hearts and in our minds. Now, I got a word for somebody today because the enemy has been attacking you because he knows that you're a warrior and you're a threat to his kingdom. You made a commitment to God to serve him and him only. And ever since then, the devil's primary target has been to mess with your man. Who am I talking to this morning? Yes. He knows that if he can control your thoughts, he knows that if he can get in your head, he can influence your actions and ultimately destroy you. So he does it by sowing seeds of doubt, fear, and worry. And when you began to entertain those thoughts, they began to take root and they grow into strongholds. But I need to remind somebody this morning. Yes. The Bible says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You see, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 through 5 reminds us for though we walk in the flesh, amen, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not come, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down 
of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. See, we got to take captive of every thought. See, the devil likes to play with your mind. You got to take captive of those thoughts and make them be obedient unto Christ. Make them be obedient unto his word. Oftentimes when I pray uh, for people or myself, I say, forgive us of those sins that we committed or even thought. How many of you know you can thank some bad stuff? The devil can put some bad stuff in your head. Amen. You got to take control of it. And, uh, amen. See, sin first begins to take place in the mind before it actually takes place. Uh, I, I remember Jesus saying, uh, for as a, a man lusteth on a woman, he's committed adultery already. Uh, the thoughts in his head. Amen. Uh, so I just stop by to tell somebody today that the battle. For our minds and our hearts is real. Look at your neighbor and say, it's real. It's real. And look at your neighbor again and tell him, this ain't no joke. No. See, so you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to hold on to what Christ died for you and, and given you. Amen. Because the enemy is constantly trying to destroy our walk. How many of you know he not only, if he can't have you, watch this. If he can't have you, he try to destroy your reputation. Uh, it, that would, nobody want to listen to you or hear you. See, the enemy is sneaky and he's busy. But you got to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Yes. It doesn't mean that you're perfect, but you strive for perfection. And you didn't know it, but God has a word for you today. That's why he was trying so hard to stop some of you from coming today. He didn't want you to hear this. Are you ready? Take this with you when you leave. 1 John 4 and 4. 1 John 4 and 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Here it is. Here's your word. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Oh, that would have been a good time to praise God. That would have been a good time to give God some thanks. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Although sometimes it may seem like it's a losing battle. But you've got to understand that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you because of that we're victorious over all false doctrines and teachers. And because greater is he that is in us, we are more than conquerors, the Bible says. Because greater is he that is in us, we are overcomers. Because greater is he that is in us, we can have joy unspeakable. Because greater is he that is in us, we can have peace that passes all understanding. Because greater is he that is in us, we can stand. And having done all to stand, we can stand therefore. Because greater is he that is in us, we don't have to fall for the tricks and the schemes of the devil. Because greater is he that is in us, we don't have to be deceived. Because greater is he that is in us, any storm that may come, he's greater. He's greater than sickness and grief, heartache and death. Come on and tell your neighbor, that's why you got to fight the good fight of faith. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You see, this scripture reminds us in no uncertain terms that we have the power of God within us. Uh, so when adversity knocks on your door, we don't have to give up. Uh, we don't have to quit. We shouldn't lose heart because the same God the same God who created the heavens and the earth. The same God who holds the stars in his hand is living in us. And he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
but I'll be with you always, even until the end of this world. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, he said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. You see, our God is greater than anything we face. He's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Means he's all powerful, all knowing, ever present. There's no situation, no problem, no challenge that is beyond his understanding, beyond his reach or his power to intervene because there's nothing too hard for him. He says, I'm come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, when the apostle John writes, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world, he's referring to the Holy Ghost, the third person of the Trinity who dwells within every believer. The Holy Ghost is not a mere force of energy, but he's God himself living within us. And that's good news because that means that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, the same power that poured the red sea, the same power that created the universe resides also in us. He, the Holy Ghost, empowers us to live godly lives, to resist temptation. The Holy Ghost empowers us to endure suffering, to serve others, and to bear witness to Christ. The Holy Ghost gives us the strength to overcome the challenges and adversities that we face, not by our own strength, but by God's strength, because we can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens us. The Holy Ghost is greater than any power in the world. It's greater than the power of sin. It's greater than the power of death. It's greater than the power of Satan. It's greater than the power of this world system that opposes God. No matter what we face, no matter how formidable or overwhelming it may seem, we can overcome it because the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in the world. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Come on and look at your neighbor and say, if God be for you, can't nobody be against you? You see, when we truly grasp the magnitude of God's power and greatness, it changes our perspective on the challenges that we face every day. Jesus said, in this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. You see, whether it's a health crisis, a financial difficulty, a strained relationship, a deep personal struggle, these problems, as real and as painful as they may be, are not bigger than our God. At times we may even be tempted to question God's goodness. We may even wonder why he allows us to go through such things or such hardships. But through it all, but through it all somebody say through it all. We must remember that his ways are higher than our ways. And he sees the bigger picture and he works all things together for our good. Even in the midst of our trials, his goodness is at work. I remember David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Again, he said, I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now this doesn't mean that we won't face difficulties. This doesn't mean that our problems will magically disappear. Yes. But what it does mean that we can face them with a different attitude, with a sense of hope and assurance. Psalms 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Ain't that good? He's our refuge. We can hide within God. Amen. He covers us with his wings. He protects us like a fortified city. He's our refuge and our strength. I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me. He's a very present help in time of trouble. 
So we can trust that God is with us, that he is in us, and that he will give us the strength to overcome. That's why Philippians 2 and 5 says, let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. See, we can continue to fight the good fight of faith, knowing that Christ is with us. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because Satan whispers lies, trying to make you believe that you're not good enough. You're not loved. You're not worthy. His tactics are sudden, subtle, I should say, and deadly. Amen. He tempts us with sin, promising pleasure and satisfaction, but delivering only emptiness and destruction. The Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. But how many of you know payday is coming after a while? As a matter of fact, in the book of James, the first chapter, verses 12 through 15, on the screen it reads, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. It means you're going to go through something. You're going to be tempted. You're going to have some trials. He said, blessed is the man that endures temptation. He said, for when he is tried, that word tried means tested. For when he is tested, amen, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. You're going to go through something, but how many of you know, just hold on. Keep trusting God. Look to the hills for what's coming to him. Every now and then, you just got to call on the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. This temptation is tough. Help me, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. I'm weak, Lord. I believe the Bible says that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He goes on to say, let no man say that when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. So when you're being tempted to do evil, it ain't God. Don't blame God for it. That's the devil. Amen. God don't tempt you to do evil. Amen. Amen. God will not allow the devil to tempt you, but God don't tempt you with evil. And God will also make a way of escape. If it get too strong that you can't bear it, he said, I'll make a way of escape. I remember coming up in school, they used to have that little thing and say, uh, say no to drugs. Y'all remember that day? That way back, say no. Just say no. Just say no. Every now and then in temptation, you got to just say no. You got to know. But no, but no, no, no. People come at you with this no, but no. And sometimes you just got to walk away. Y'all with me today? Listen what he says. But if every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his what? Own lust. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Something you lust in that is what draws you away. Come on, somebody. And enticed by it. Then, here's a the kicker. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. And if we open the door to these thoughts, these desires, demons can, and they will enter in, and they'll take hold of your lives. You see, the devil wants to devour you. He wants to divert you from the plans of God, the calling that God has on your life. He does all he can to try to get you off track, try to get you going down another road. Just like he did Eve in the garden when she saw the fruit and she looked at it. And he tempted her with the temptation was there. But she said that God has told us that in the day that we eat of it, we shall surely die. What did the devil say? Oh, surely you won't die. That's the schemes and the tricks of the devil. When we know something is wrong, here comes somebody who God understands. He knows your heart. How many have been told that before? He know your heart. He know your heart. Yeah, he know your heart. That don't mean you sin because he know your heart. He made me this way. No, God made you to live holy. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And without holiness, and no man shall see the Lord. 
Well, I don't want everybody talking about me. They might not want to be around me. So be it. So be it. Well, Pastor, that sounds real hard, man. I, I like my family. I want to be around my family. Do you want to die and go to hell because of your love for your family? Yes. Well, I hear some people say, I'll die and go to hell over my children. Well, you probably will. Get your neighbor and say, you got to fight the good fight of faith. We all love our children. We all love mom and daddy. We all love brother and sister. But watch this here. And I say it. And I'm on camera. They ain't worth dying and going to hell over. Let me say it again. That's our home. I say they ain't worth dying and going to hell over. You got to make your man up. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. First. But God comes first. God comes first. God comes first. Do all I can for mom and daddy, brothers and sisters, children. Do all you can for them except for sin for them. But see, the devil, he'll try to divert you. Into making you feel like, well, that's your child. Don't turn your back on your child. Don't turn your back on your husband. Don't turn your back on your wife. Don't turn your back on... You're not turning your back on him. You're turning your back on sin. Am I with you? You with me today? Yes. Amen. You're turning your back on sin. But the devil will try to make you think you're turning your back on your family. Or your friends. Or your loved ones. But no, I'm turning my back on sin... Watch this here. Because look, look, what, what did he tell? What did he tell him to fight the good fight of faith? Can you pull that up for me again? And then we'll go back to where you're at. Don't lose your place. But get, get, go, go back to first. Look at that. Let's look at that again. Fight. Look at your neighbor say fight. fight. The Bible didn't put that in there if you didn't have to fight for it. Yes, yes. You're going to have some battles. Sometimes that they are inward battles and sometimes they are outward battles with people. But he said, fight the good fight of faith. He said, lay hold on what? Eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. I'm going to watch this here. He said, where unto thou art also called and hast did what? Has professed a good Now you say, you say. Yeah. You say you was. You profess that. Act like it. Look at your neighbor and say, act like it. Act like it. Amen. You can't act like the world and be a child of God. You can't live like the world being a child of God. But the devil wants to devour you and divert you. But God wants you to conquer and win. Watch this. If everybody turned their back on you, watch this. If everybody turned their back on you because of you living holy... You and God is the majority. Yes. You and God is the majority. And watch this. You ain't going to help your family get saved by indulging in their sins. Because right. they're going to throw it back in your face. Well, Mama, how you going to tell me? Daddy, how you going to tell me? You following what I'm saying? Well, I was only trying to help you. Well, what did you help them do? You helped them to think that you can go to church, say you're a Christian, and still do this and still do that. And what you teach them. How did I get away over there? Because the devil wants to divert you from your calling. Amen. Watch this here. We got to be willing to fight the good fight of faith. This is the fight that we're in. Remember, Jesus says, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And here's a shocker. Every one of us in here is involved in this fight whether you want to be or not. There's no non-combatants in this spiritual war that is raging all around us. Amen. Whether you're saved or lost, well, I said you're in a spiritual war. Because if you're saved, you're in a spiritual war because the devil is attacking you. And if you're lost, you're in a spiritual war because he don't want you to get saved. You with me today? And this spiritual war 
It's a matter, it's so serious that it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of spiritual life or eternal life and eternal death. It's a matter of heaven or the lake of fire. That's why, that's why, that's why Joshua told the people, he said, choose you this day who are you going to serve. He said, as for me and my house, <laughs> Come on, somebody. I, I, I feel good. I feel that. He say, choose you. He's he talking to the people. I'm, I'm talking to you too. He say, you choose who you're going to serve. You choose. Look, look, look here. That, that, that's something you may have to tell your children one day. You may have to tell your friends. You choose who you're going to serve. But as for me, as for me and my house, who is me and my house? Me and my wife. Because my children grown. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me this morning. They got to make their own choice. He say, choose you whom you going to serve. As for me and my house, we going to serve the Lord. Now you can go on and say what you want to. You can talk about me. Whatever. But as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. You hear me today? You, you hear me? That's the spiritual world we're in. Eternal life or eternal death. Heaven or the lake of fire. It don't matter if you're rich, poor, black, white, or anything in between. It doesn't matter whether you're educated, uneducated. Everybody, everywhere is involved in this spiritual world. There's no such thing as a non combatant no standing on the sidelines. You can't, you know, some people say, well, uh, I'm, I'm walking down the middle. You, 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 you're saved over here today. You're unsaved over here tomorrow. Uh, you hang out with saved people. You hang out with unsaved people. You do what saved people do. You do what unsaved people do. What they call that? Straddling the fence. Yeah. But how many of them know? Even though you call yourself doing that, you can't do that. No. I know Jesus said in Revelation. Somebody say Revelation. Revelation. He told the church in Revelations, he said, I would rather that you were hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, because you're trying to straddle the fence. Oh, I wish I had some help today. Because you're trying to be a fence traveler, he said, you are detestable to me. You make me want to puke. That's what he said. You make me sick on my stomach. That's what God said. Ain't that something? God saying you make me sick trying to be lukewarm fence strappers. But Joshua say, choose you this day whom you gonna serve. Well, you know why? You know why I choose God? Because I don't want to make him sick on the stomach over me. I don't want to cause God to throw up over me. And some people cause God, that's what he's saying. You with me today? Can I go a little further? There's no such thing as a disinterested party. Oh, uh, well, I'm just not interested in it right now, or maybe later, or just, uh, you made your choice right then. I'm just not ready right now. You made your choice. You say, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I don't want to serve God. That was your choice right then. You see, you can't, you can't, you can't, that don't save you because you say I ain't ready right now. You, when you say I ain't ready right now, if you die, you're going to bust here wide open. That was your choice. Well, I was planning on, well, hell probably going to be full of a lot of people who was planning on getting right. Y'all with me today? Preacher, why are you preaching like that there? You know why? Just like the preacher said last week, so the blood won't be on my hands. Do you hear me today? Somebody say that Christianity is not a fighting religion, but it's a fighting faith. You see, our faith is constantly being attacked. And that's why we have to have a made-up man. The Apostle Paul also said this. He said, for Christ I live, and for Christ I die. We used to have a, a saying that all is fair in love and war. How many of you heard that? All is fair in love and war. But it should have been the other way around. 
All is not fair in love and war. Amen. The devil don't play fair. Amen. And because he don't play fair, we got to fight the good fight of faith. I got to go to my seat this morning. But the apostle Paul says in 2 Timothy 2 and 3, thou endure hardness. He said you need to endure hardness. This Paul again talking to Timothy, young preacher. He said endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. Some translations say endure suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure difficulties. Endure hardships. Can I talk a little bit? Endure people walking away from you. Endure people turning their bikes on you. Endure people talking about you. As a good soldier of Christ. See the enemy he has an arsenal of weapons. He may have tried to keep you depressed. Distressed. But you got to be encouraged even in the midst of the fight. I, 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 I don't like to talk about movies and stuff like that. But y'all all familiar with that movie Rocky? You know. When you, when you look at that movie Rocky, every time you look at it, he's getting his brains beat out, ain't he? He's looking ugly, ain't he? Can you hardly see your eyes closed and everything? I mean, I mean, everybody he fought, from that Russian guy to Apollo Creed, and I mean, I can't name all of them. I don't know how many movies it was. But every one of them, when you look at him, he would just beat up like a punk, wasn't he? But you know the main thing that encouraged people that everybody watched them move as Rocky? Because Rocky didn't give up. They say, Rocky, throw in the towel. I'm going to throw in the towel. He said, no, 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 no. He wouldn't quit. And he wouldn't give up. And watch this. And then every one of them at the end, he did what? He won, didn't he? Yes, sir. That's all you got to do. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. You're going to be attacked. Every now and then, you're going to get whooped. You're going to get knocked down sometimes. And it's going to hurt sometimes. But don't quit. Don't give up on God. That's what it's all about. Devil got all kinds of weapons, but don't give up on God. That's why every now and then, you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what David did. David, when he returned from from fighting with all of his men and he got back and the city was burnt down, the wives had been taken captive, the children had been taken captive and they was crying and sad and then the men turned on David so to say if we hadn't been following you we'd have been here to protect our family and they all turned on him but then David said he encouraged himself in the Lord you hear me today? You got to encourage yourself in the Lord sometimes. Amen. Why? Because weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. That's why you got to hold on. Amen. You got to be encouraged and, and know that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against you shall be condemned in the judgment. Amen. You'll find out that this race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he that endureth unto the end. So you got to endure hardness as a good soldier and keep fighting the good fight of faith. Whatever you're going through, you got to be like Job and say, all the days of my appointed time, on this battlefield, will I wait until my change come? And as we wait as soldiers, amen, we got to learn how to study our commands. We got to study that word, the written instructions of the Bible from front to backwards, amen. And then you'll find that if you wait on the Lord, you'll find that you shall renew your strength, amen. You shall mount up with wings as eagles, and you'll run and not be weary, and you'll walk and not faint. You see, many are losing the battle. Because they don't know the word of God. God said in Hosea 4 and 6. He said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God I will also forget thy children. Mm -mm -mm. It's a dangerous end to being ignorant of God. And who he really is. 
And we see it unfolding in our churches today. Amen. It starts with a lack of church attendance. Uh, worship. The worship begins to dry up. Uh, no commitment. Amen. They reject God's knowledge of his word. And believe it or not, the beliefs of many Christians are at odds with the teachings in the very own church. And there's no visible difference in the behavior of the church and the unchurched. Oh, I need to say that again. I say so you can tell it because there's no difference in those that claim to be saved and those that are not saved. Yes, Lord. And this comparison suggests that whatever happens inside the church on Sundays has a minimal effect on how church folk behave Monday through Saturday. It's sad to say it, but sometimes behavior by those who profess Christ is worse than those who don't. And that's why you got to fight the good fight of faith so you don't end up in that category. As soldiers of Christ, our main objective is to please our commander, our general, our Lord and Savior. Even Jesus said it when he came. He said, I came not to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. You see, Paul was charging Timothy to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. Amen. You see, the battle has already been fought on Calvary. And the victory has already been won. Now all we have to do is just endure hardness as a good soldier. You see, Satan can't possess you anymore, so he tries to oppress you. I'm almost finished. And the good news is this. You can finish the race, and you can finish it well. You don't have to be diverted, thrown off course. But you must be first willing to fight the good fight of faith. We saw the Olympics recently, and winning the Olympics is an incredible feat. Because they're competing against people from all over the world. But there is another race that's going on every day. That's far, by far the greatest race that you and I will ever run. This race is a spiritual race for eternity. And it's the most important race of our lives. Those who finish this race will receive an eternal crown. That for outweighs the treasures of this world. And listen to 1 Corinthians 9 24 through 27 and I get ready to take my seat. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the game goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. Paul says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Picture in your mind, if you will, a runner who is in the greatest race of his life. Yes, Lord. He's tired. He's weary. Ready to give up. His muscles are straining. Fatigue. His body is telling him to quit. But he continues to press on. Because no matter what it takes, he's determined to finish the race. His goal is not just to finish, but to finish strong. Step by step. He presses on until suddenly he sees the finish line. Yes, and with all of his might, he spreads that final lap and crosses the line. That's the kind of grace, that's the kind of race God wants you to run. It's God's desire that you run this race, that you finish this race, that you win this race by keeping the faith and finishing strong. This is what the Apostle Paul also said in Philippians 3 and 14. He said, I press on toward the gold to win the prize for which God has called me 
henceforth in Christ Jesus. Uh, King James translation says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. See, we are in a spiritual race, y'all. And that is by far the greatest race that we will ever, ever, ever run. And how we run this race will be the difference between great and eternal rewards. To run this race, we must stay on course and keep the faith. And we must praise on until the race is finished. We're standing. Then when the battle trumpets sound and a ceasefire has been announced, you and I will be able to say, like the Apostle Paul said, for I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now come on and look at your neighbor one more time and say, we got to fight the good fight of faith. There may be somebody this morning who hasn't received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's your first step is entering this spiritual battle, is accepting Jesus. If you want the power, if you want Jesus in you to be able to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You must repent of your sins and say, Lord, I've sinned. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me. And when you do that and you mean it from your heart truly, Christ will come into your heart. He will fill you with the Holy Ghost and he will give you power over the power of the enemy. But until you do that, you're fighting a losing battle. You are fighting a losing battle. That's why John said, greater is he that is in me, the Holy Ghost, than he that is in the world. The devil may come, he may try you, he may tempt you, but you got power to resist. But until you get God in your life, you don't have no power to resist the devil. Maybe you keep wondering why, why I keep falling, why I keep going through this. Maybe because you need some help. You need the Holy Ghost. You need power in your life. You need to be saved. I want to give you that opportunity today to come down and give the Lord your life. Don't be ashamed of what people may say or what they